couple, don't they? Russell. Hello, Dr. Blake. Thought I'd drop in and see you again. Fine. How are you getting along? Well, in a way, that's what I came to see you about. You see, it's like this. I, um, I've been living in a rooming house downtown, and the landlady's got my truck with all my clothes in it. She's holding it because I owe her a month's rent. How much do you owe her? The rent? Oh, that's only about $40, but, uh, I got a girlfriend out in Chicago, and I had a letter from her the other day, and... She said she could get a job for me where she works, if I could get out there. So you want me to pay your fare, is that it? How much is it? Well, how much is it? Oh, um, oh, about five grand. $5,000? Are you out of your mind? That ain't a lot of money. Not to Slick Raleigh, it ain't. Who's this Slick Raleigh you keep talking about? What's he got to do with me? No wonder that voice of yours hit me. Say, listen, Dr. Blake, or whatever you call yourself, you don't have to put on any act with me. The whole thing's as clear as day. Now I know why you hired gloves. But you can't buy me off like that. It's five grand or else. Or else what? Or else I'll smear your name all over the front pages of every newspaper in the country. Why should that worry me? I've been in the newspapers before. And that's nothing like the rap you're going to take this time. I think you better leave, Miss Russell. You've obviously got me mixed up with somebody else. You're trying to blackmail me. You seem to forget that you were nothing but a small-time chiseler and you hooked up with me. Get out. Listen, don't give me any of that. Either you pay me or this swell doctor record of yours is all washed up and they'll be parking you in a different chair. Get out of here and don't come back. Listen, you won't be here to come back, too. Gloves right away. He's at the garage. Is anything wrong, Jim? No, just get gloves. What's the boss want? I don't know, but he's very upset about something. He is? You want me, Doc? Gloves, who's slick crawling? Slick? Why, he's just a guy I used to know. Why? Do you know Peggy Russell? Russell? No, I never heard of her. She seems to know you. Oh, lots of people know me. I don't know. Why, what about her? She was just in here. She mentioned you and Raleigh. Oh, that's nothing. Everybody knows Slick and I used to work together. When? Oh, a couple, three years ago. Then why should she call me Slick Raleigh? Oh, that name's Daffy. Slick's dead. He got knocked off. Are you sure of that? Absolutely. All right, that's all, Gloves. Tell me something, Gloves. Were we so much alike, this Slick Raleigh and I? You? <laughs> oh, a little on the surface, maybe. <laughs> you ain't nothing like Slick, though, boss. Never mind the stolen. What was you doing up at the docks office this afternoon? I don't get you. You know what I'm talking about. I told you a long time ago to lay off my boss, and that still goes. Well, I was just making him a little friendly visit. Then what did you call him Slick for? Well, he is, ain't he? Listen, I'm gonna tip you off to something. Slick's dead. He got his out west. You understand that? Okay by me. Well, then don't forget it, cause I'm not gonna tell all you. All right, that. all right. If you say he's dead, he's dead. You don't have to get tough about it. 
I might have to. It's okay with me either way. You don't think I'd turn him in, do you? It wouldn't be a good idea, even if he was alive, which he ain't. Well, then what are you beefing about? You know me, Glovey. Yeah. That's what I'm worrying about. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Sit down. Thanks. I've seen you for a long time. Does the reward still go for Slick Rowley? Well, I'll say it does. What's it worth? Ten grand? Where is he? Around. When do I get it? On conviction. Nothing doing. I want it when you pick him up. Oh, come on, Peggy. We can play ball. The dough has to be in the bag before I talk. Well, I'll... I'll get you half on the rest and the balance on conviction. I want it all. All right, I'll get it for you. Now, where is he? I think you better put that in writing. If I say you get it, you get it. Well, all right, then. He's right where you once told me he'd be. On Park Avenue. What does he call himself? Oh, this will kill you. He calls himself Dr. James Blake. Goodbye. You've just lost ten grand. Well, but I know it's like I saw him just a little while ago. And I tell you it isn't. I met Dr. Blake and made the same mistake you did. Forget it. I tell you, it is slick. He must have had his face lifted. He's got gloves working for him. He's got the same voice. He's even got an old habit of slicks. Every time he gets thinking about something, he twirls his keychain. And you want me to arrest an eminent physician because he swings his keys? Well, I do the same thing myself sometimes. Well, but it's slick, I tell you. You've got to arrest him. Oh, you're wasting my time. All right, wise guy. But you're making an awful sap of yourself. Dr. James Blake on the phone. All right. Why, yes, Inspector. I'm familiar with that type of case. I've studied many of them. Sure, I'll be glad to help. Five o'clock will be quite convenient. I'll be there. That's all, Inspector. Come on. Well, what do you think of him? Genuine case, all right. He's not faking. Yes, I think you're right. I'll have him committed to an asylum. Well, thank you, Doctor, for coming over. I appreciate very much you giving me your time. Not at all. I'm glad to be able to help. Call on me at any time. Thank you, I will. Scully? Yes? Come in. There they are. This is Blake's and this is Raleigh's. No chance for a mistake. Why, they're identical. Look at this island here. Now, the ridge leads from here and splits and comes around here and comes together again to form this island here and here. No, Inspector. No chance for a miss. You've got your man. Uh, it's taking a long time. And you'll never know how close he was to getting away from me. Well, you better go grab him. No, he'll be around. Yes, sir. Mike, call up the 27th precinct and have him pick up Gloves Baker. Yes, sir. How long have you been working for Dr. Blake? Well, I've been driving for him about a couple months now, I guess. Mm-hmm. How'd you come to get the job? Well, he just asked me could I drive a car, and I said yes, and he gave me the job. Oh, just like that, eh? How'd you happen to meet him in the first place? Peg met him on the island. He was a doc over there. She kept telling me what nice guy he was, and he was doing nice things for people. So I went up to his office one day. Well, you just give me the job, that's all. How is he? A nice guy to work for? Yeah, he's all right. Did you ever notice anything funny about him? His voice, for instance. His voice? No, nothing special. Did you ever strike him it sounded like someone you knew? No. 
Well, I guess that's all, old gloves. I just wanted to check upon you and be sure that you were behaving yourself. Well, you don't have to worry about me, Inspector. This law and order stuff is swell for me. <laughs> Margaret, I'll sit in front with gloves, if you don't mind. That's quite all right, dear. She's glad you're back, sir. I got back as quickly as I could. A couple of days after that, this guy Logan has me picked up. I'm dragged down to headquarters and put on the carpet. They asked me a lot of questions about Dr. Blake. Of course, he didn't say anything about Slick, but I knew what he was driving at. You didn't say anything? No, I played dumb. As soon as I could get away from him, I went to that cable office. I'm glad you did. I'm afraid this is very serious, Gloves. And that ain't all. The doc himself's been fishing around for the last couple of weeks, asking me what I knew about Slick and the dame. I try to laugh it off, but the guy's just not himself, that's all. He's got a hunch or something. There's a lot more to this than you've told me, Doctor. You're protecting me from something. My dear boy, you're just imagining... I've checked. There's no record of a James Blake having been in an automobile accident at the time of my operation. But at about that time, Slick Raleigh disappeared. That's a mere coincidence. Not when so many people mistake me for Raleigh. First that detective down at the court, then Gloves, and finally the Russell woman. It can't be an accident when it happens so often. You've got to tell me the truth about myself. My dear boy, I've already told you you are James Blake. How long have I been James Blake? As long as I've known That's you. That's only ten years or so. Who was I before that? To the best of my knowledge, you have always been Blake. This uncertainty is driving me out of my mind. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't work. I keep straining my mind, trying to remember back. Oh, Doctor, I'm grateful to you for all you've done for me. You've been like a father to me. But I have a right to know who I really am. I must know. Who am I? I never wanted to tell you this, Jim. I wanted to spare you if I could. But evidently, it's no longer my secret. And I'm sit down, Jim. I may as well tell you the whole story. About ten years ago, I was lecturing up at the medical school. Yes, sir. Call my car, will you please? Yes, sir. Will you be gone long? No, not long. Frank? I'm going out and pick up a man that I've been after for ten years. Good luck, Chief. And you know the rest. Naturally, when I got Gloves Cable, I hurried back because I realized what had happened. What are you going to do, Tim? What can I do? If I'm Raleigh, I've got to pay Raleigh's debt. You'd better think twice before doing anything like that. It's perfectly clear there's only one course to take. I'm not so sure of that, Jim. Yes? time by this moment. I look forward to it as the greatest day of my life. Now it's come, it doesn't give me the pleasure I thought it would. Well, I've been uh, looking forward to this uh, premiere tonight, and now that it's almost over, I, uh, <laughs> I'm rather happy about the whole thing. I, uh, <clears throat> this thing is uh, rather amazing. As I say, these, uh, these things disappear from the face of the earth, of course. Uh, when, uh, I don't know why it was, but they disappeared. Actually, what happened was they had trouble with their eggs. I explained that to you last night about the dinosaur eggs, and 
how they lay the big eggs, but the eggs are so dark and the dinosaurs can't see very well that they forgot where they put them, you know. And then eventually they got covered over with dust and things and they got squashed into the very tiny these days. Some few sneak around on top of the earth. Most of them are found down there under the big swamp hole. I'll just put this boy over because uh, he doesn't seem to be doing anything worthwhile. You, you may let go here if you don't mind here. Look, come on, let's just... There we are, dear boy. He's got a grip on here, a death grip. <laughs> he hasn't seen the light of day in about three million years. There's no wonder he's hanging on here. There we are, old boy. One more little toesy. I'll just put you over here in the sink and you'll be, you'll be very happy there, won't you? Eh? <laughs> I hate a grant, boy. There we are, boy. Just stay there. Just... But, Dolly, every scientific society in the country is protesting. The district attorney's office is flooded with telegrams. Doesn't it mean anything to you that Judge Treacher has resigned from the bench just so he can defend you? Don't you see? Everybody wants you to go free. But we can't do it without you. You've got to help us make a fight of it. Slick Raleigh. Slick Raleigh. No matter what happens, no matter how it turns out, I'm still Slick Raleigh. The killer. Oh, darling, I don't care who you are or what you've done. I'll always love you. For my sake, you mustn't give up. Take a little drive. All right. Say, Peg, did you get one of them subpoenas? Uh-huh. What about it? I got one of them, too. I can't figure out why. What's your slant on it? Oh, nothing. They just catch up with the mug, that's all. Ah, that ain't no way to talk about Dr. Blake. Doctor, my eye. He's slick, and everybody knows it now. All right, so he is slick. So what? So he burns. Not if you and me don't talk. But we do. Ah, oh, you ain't gonna do nothing like that. You can't. That's where you're wrong. I'm gonna do it. What's the big idea? You used to be crazy about him. Yeah, I used to be. But that was a long time ago. Now, listen. You was always a good businesswoman, out to make a few bucks. Well? Supposing I got you a little dough to take a run out and not show up at the trial. How much dough? Well, say, a couple of C-notes. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. A couple of hundred bucks? You're down in the bargain basement, brother. Well, I might rake up, say, 500 or even a grand, maybe. Quick plan and make me a real offer. I don't know where I can get any more dough, Peg. You don't, but I do. You mean the reward for turning them in? So that's how they made the nab, huh? That's just about the way I figured it. You no good little... contended that Slick Raleigh killed uh, Officer Williams in the course of a bank robbery, thus making the offense first-degree murder. He then offered proof that Slick Raleigh has become Dr. James Blake, 
thus making Dr. Blake responsible for the crime. This is the legal aspect of the state's case. And he finally concluded by demanding that Dr. Blake must suffer the extreme penalty for the crimes committed by Slick Rawley. You have perhaps wondered why I have not denied any of the state's contentions or indeed offered any defense. But do not believe that it is because of any feeling of helplessness on my part, far from it. Because I think, and Dr. Blake agrees, that there is no reason to deny these charges because, gentlemen of the jury, all of the state's charges are true. We have never denied that Dr. Blake was once the notorious criminal Slick Raleigh. We do not deny it now.